All right, time for a very cheery experience where we go up and talk to a rape victim. Oh boy, light and cheery episode in a game full of light and cheery episodes. I guess this means he might have been telling the truth, unless I'm about to like find out he was lying, in which case, embarrassing. Who is it? A woman's voice answers, muffled by the door. Tired, controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up, the door's open, she shouts. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. There's not a huge amount of area though. Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she's had an extended stay. Piles of dirty clothes. A woman's. Egads. I should probably close the door like I'm not a fucking weirdo. There we go. You see the yard below. The corpse is no longer there. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked on uh, one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. It's been used quite a lot. But not for scrubbing blood of t off tiles or anything else interesting, it seems. Medications? Pharmaceuticals line the shelves. Sheet upon sheet and pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid. APAP. Eye drops. Blood thinners. That's quite a collection in here. Anything of note? He asks in a lowered voice. Search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol. Histoperidol. Something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads NACRA. NACRA? It's used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. NACRA, opioid antagonist. Interesting. It's used for it's used for diamorphine overdoses. The lieutenant nods, then looks at the door. You could say he's on the lookout. Pill sheets. Among some foreign, probably Messinian or Gottwaldian, marked red blister packs, you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. Well, I don't have that much know-how. I have plus one for chemical hangover. Huh. Nope, that dice that dice roll fucked me. Hmm. I do have a point. I want to just try it again. It might be useful. We're in the main quest right now. Just being able to get these kind of checks correctly can actually be really helpful. 72? There we go. Oh god. Oh, I'm great at that though. Minus one for sweaty hands. Don't give a fuck. Bright orange bottle with Preptide stamped on it. In sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding the little plastic container. Hmm. What's so exciting about this orange bottle? It's speed, man. Just what you're looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine. And talk about psychological disorders, but what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Lieutenant, I also see a brand called Preptide. Preptide. A euphemism for pharmace uh, pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy! Told Kim about it. Slightly reduced chance. Take it in secret. Take it in plain sight. Hmm. So this is what I'm amounting to. I was mostly looking for information that might be helpful. I don't really want to have speed on my character, even though my interfacing makes it easier to do it. Hmm. Maybe just the knowledge that I found it can be useful going forward. I don't really want to have it, necessarily. But I know she has it, which might be useful information.
This place just keeps going. So she has like a, a like a more narrow two floor sort of thing. She has the roof access. The bed's been hastily made. She sleeps on the the roof. We're looking out into a roof deck at least. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects on the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your fingers across the surface. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges, but the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. Looks like, looks like it, yes. He adjusts his glasses. Hmm. One window is especially new. Curious. That was another little, like, micro map. That one, that one tiny room was the entire zone, essentially. The smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astramenthal. Cold coffee in an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. Huh. Look, handful of dried white wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises from the roof, picking them in the air. Move your hands, fast! Huh. Kapow! You catch the single white flower between your fingers, the rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand, just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Finger pistols. Hey, finger pistols at him. Oh, is it gonna animate? Hey. Your 9mm semi-automatic finger pistols produce a satisfying snap. Strange for such a low-caliber finger gun to sound so chunky. <laughs> God damn it. The, fl the flower in your other hand is impressed. So is Kim. That's not entirely true. The lieutenant's looking at the door to the east and mostly misses them. Aw. Uh -huh. Dang it. Where's that door go? Alright, well I'm curious. This is a small heavy door. There's no lock in sight. Kick the door in? Jesus. Push? It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Where does this lead to? I don't know. Lieutenant Yefreta. He makes a note. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and, and can, cantilevers. Cantilevers. Tap on the roof with your foot. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes. The cadaver. And... He nods towards the young woman. A number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's, it's not unimportant. See? The main investigation and the door below are merging into a stereo investigation. I hate it when that happens. We're not gonna kick it in. It's not right now, but also I'm not particularly great at doing that. Is, do I have a negative right now? I have a one on physical instrument. It's not great. Overall, it's not great. What do, What now? Oh, the flower. The dried maybells. This is the wildflower you caught. One of a bouquet of mu muguits that you found on the whirling roof. It's shedding its petals quickly in your pocket. Six crumbling petals rest in your palm. They're white. A bell-shaped crown. What is this, Kim? 
This is the Insulindian Lily. The lieutenant corrects his glasses. Called Maybells, or Lucille's Tears, during the revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? Who pinned them? Which side? The revolutionaries, so the communards and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the Caesarian army, so it held meaning for the kingsmen too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths. They are also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Does this flower blossom in early spring? Yes, but not this early. Not to my knowledge. He observes the petals. It looks dried, preserved. Is it a coincidence? It being on the roof? Maybe. Maybe not. He makes a note in his little notebook. We'll see. Very well. The petals fall. I uh, feel dry and fragile in your hand. Water flows under the channel bridge. Dark water. You rub your sides for warmth, but there is none. Blow on your fingers. Inland. From the Martinez dis uh, distributary. The channel that brought waste water from the silk mills of Jamrock and then dead bodies during the war. The wrinkled fingers of an old man crush flower petals, then sprinkle them in the stream like white salt. Wait, have you noticed there's a war veteran playing a ball game on the plaza? You should ask him about the flowers. Hmm, maybe we should. Not now, though. We're here for something else. Welcome to the roof. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Also, the rain she's standing in and smoking in? Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you got up here. It's much nicer now. Her eyes wander north toward the yard. Oh, because the body's gone? Where the dead body used to hang, clearly visible from the roof, but no longer. Thank you for that, officers. Truly. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell is opened in there. Disco Infernum. They also say that's why the cleaning lady quit. Because of the Infernum. Whoops. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Prison 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Prison 41. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I've ever seen in my life, and I have seen a few. Oh yeah, life gets hard, but we go on. The course of the 35 single, megaphoning the entire human race, instills you with the Fuck it all swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. Plow into grannies? Like run them over? You ain't seen nothing yet. There's a karaoke stage downstairs. Wow. She shakes her head in disbelief, breathing in the coffee smell. Johnny Law's about to tear it up sad style. I assure you, he's not about to tear it up in any style. In fact... 
We'll show him. He'll tear it up all the styles. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah, uh, I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. What could she be thinking of? It's hard to say. Her shoulders are relaxed, her eyes on the cigarette. It's like she's disappointed. This wasn't about more entertaining matters. What is your name, miss, for the record? Shit. <laughs> uh, I already forgot. Well, I typed PR and it auto completed to pronounce this name. I already forgot. I cannot remember this one. Clashe. 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 All right. Clashe Amando. Same name Titus gave you. It sounds orangeese, as does her accent. Her birthmarks also signal orange. Or ora clashe. Orange? Con considering how her name's pronounced, that, mu that must be orange. I'm gonna lose. <laughs> I can't keep up with the pronunciations. There's so many. You don't know why, but Oran orange. Or orange. Or orange. 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 I don't. That's a really. That's a, that's a mouthful. That's hard. Orange. She's girls tend to come speckled with them. Are you from Orange? Right, sir. Redfort, Republic of Orange. I guess you could say I am an Orange's expatriate. The victim's ethnicity could have been Orange's. Something for later. What is Orange? A bad memory, officer. The Republic of Orange is a democratic nation in the Mundi Isola, north of here, over the sea and across the Pale. It is one of the six major Occidental nations to hold stake in the continued occupation of Revacol, the coalition. People consider it a reasonable superpower. Reasonable. They will make you into a. Uh, they will make you into a fiscal colony, divert your natural resources, hold patents and shares, but they won't threaten to wipe you out any time like Revacol did in its prime. A bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. She, quints her, she squints her eyes as if to see them in the distance. Parks, glass, duraluminium. Vredefort is a confederate city. It's always autumn there. And night. At least it was for me. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you're no longer there. How old are you? I'm 28. She takes a drag. What do you do, miss? What's your specialization? Something stupid. What's that? Orange is lit. Orange is lit. Orange is literature. It's what I studied at the university. She raises both eyebrows. What is Orange's literature about? Fear of failure. Fear of death. How it sucks to be Orange's. All, all national literatures are. Only the name of the nation changes. What about Revacolian literature? People sometimes reveal things about themselves when they discuss such matters. Revacolian literature too? No. She seems glad that you asked. Revacolian lit is about, is about how magnificent and serious Revacol is. It's about how you have to save the world. I do feel the urge to save the world. Yes, I guess that's why I'm on this case. That's the nat natural state of the, Revo the Revocholian hero. She breathes in the menthol-flavored fume, savoring it, then breathes out. She seems quite relaxed for a victim of assault, but of course what seems should not be your priority. 
Or when she's lit, what do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money then? Money's very important. <laughs> no. Cool. It's not very cool, but what can you do? The passport just feels like a weird inclusion, but okay. I don't know. Thank you. That's it for the record. The record. So official. Something feels weird about demanding papers right now. When we're about to ask her about her rape. Yay! Nice room we've got here. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. What are you doing here in the whirling and rags? I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? She calculates. About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the whirling? Here in Martinez or here in Rivashol? The whirling. Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez, and because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. Where's that door lead to? I have no idea, officer. She looks at it calmly. That window's new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. An evasive maneuver. Ask a follow-up. When was it changed? During your stay? Yeah. I'm trying not to lie to you here. Stop making it hard. Whoa. Then tell the truth. The truth is I'm a horrible girl. Windows break around me. It's not their fault. You hear the scribbling of the lieutenant's pen. Feels like success. I have other questions. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. What is this wildflower? She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Shambo style? Sambo? What's Sambo? A martial art, sir. She raises an eyebrow. Is that it? Samar unboxing, or Sambo. Graceful. Martial arts stuff. Sambo style implies stealth and cool. Yes. Why was it here? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer, because of the wind. They tell us you were raped. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? It's actually already afternoon. Is it? Squinting, she takes a look around. The spring sun is high in the sky. People pass below. It is afternoon. She looks into the coffee cup. Time flies, man. So were you? Yeah. She draws out the word. I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him? She must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know... If they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more... She searches for the word. Then shrugs. Rapable. By they, she means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Ah, so first theory, the idea that they just lied about the rape entirely. Titus asks you to spice things up for us? Pretty much. She cradles her coffee cup in both hands. Warming them. Why 
What did happen to you be between you and the and the victim? We parted. Wait, partied. Where have I heard that before? This is a weird question because partying is so normal. Well, we just talked about it a minute ago downstairs. A lot of partying going on. From Titus. From her and Titus's relationship. That's where you heard it. What kind of partying? Point to your bloated face, the kind I do. With all due respect, sir, I think I think we partied a little harder than that. Harder than this? Keep pointing to your face. I didn't know that was possible. Oh, it is. You take a long. She takes a long drag. You're still alive. What did you do when you partied? We drank, sir. She takes a sip of her coffee. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough. And we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet. Calm. Downstairs. She taps on the roof with her 10 centimeter heel. At the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. A military man. As you probably know. Had a cool scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. It must have been hard for you. Seeing him there. Oh, yes. She said bitterly. I've had a great view from the roof out of the bathroom window in my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us the RCM. Yes, she's the caller. Jackpot. The call. Reporting the hanging? That was you? But boom Only 10 experience. Aw. Uh, dang it. Still, we now, now we know who reported the crime. It was the supposed rape victim, which was actually just somebody who was coupled up- uh, No, not, not a couple with him necessarily, but was just... Partying. The tri Titus- So Titus is just doing all sorts of scummy things around here, basically. I made it. She nods. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Rivershall, miss. The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it how? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So she is Gart's mystery phone cutter. And in the process, he broke the, li the landline downstairs. Did I? She looks into her coffee. Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. And another mystery solved. She did everything. She's been just standing here on the roof, having the answers to all my questions. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. <laughs> Getting complimented by my logic center. Still, that's pretty clever tampering. Simple and clever, crossing the lines like that. Seems like you had some idea. That was nifty. Thanks. She manages a smile. She looks a bit like a girl who's been complimented on her bike repair skills. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the Union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. 
She's probably really frustrated that she put herself out on a limb there to get the body taken down. And it took me an entire week to do it because I just freaked out and partied and got weird. So when she talked, so when I talked to her at the beginning of the game, she was probably pretty frustrated with me. Maybe bemused, but also frustrated and impatient. Because I'm just sitting here not doing the one thing that she not only uh, requested, but potentially risked herself to do. And here comes the police. Goodbye. There they go. I think that was actually an ambulance or a fire truck, whatever. What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age. I'm sorry. I can't do it. She puffs on her cigarette. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know. Hair. Another puff, more nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing, she thinks. But you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was... what? I think he was a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests downstairs. She looks at the floor. It's tarred. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. Oh shit, it's snowing. I'm supposed to go to that one place when it's snowing. And how'd you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously, but as I said, it's been a long winter. Why was there a bullet in his head? Bullet? There's a silence. Her brows meet in the middle for a pained frown. They shot him, too? I'm not picking up any theater craft here, sir. The pause is sincere. They stripped his clothes and they shot him. You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I, th I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me. And Sylvie, the bartender. I'm gonna have to talk to Sylvie again, aren't I? Yeah. It's hard to know what to think about the answer. Yeah, I didn't want to talk to Sylvie anymore because of the whole sorry cop aspect of, you know, ruining a week of her life and so on. But uh, I'm probably gonna want to talk to her again. Because she's she actually does seem to be a witness. Oh, my logic failed. Hmm. And are you sure you weren't raped? I'm 89% sure. That's a confusing metric, but okay. Got it. 89% is good enough. Moving on. Cool. She sincerely thinks it's very cool of you. To move the fuck on, yeah. Thank you for telling us all this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. We should head back downstairs, officer. The lieutenant looks at you. We may have things to discuss there. I had something else before we go, a little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fume disappears into her mouth. 
occur in the eye. Volition. Legendary. Ooh. Let's return to this later, miss. Why not? I'll be here until 23 o'clock, drinking coffee, most likely. Before I do anything else, I gotta, I gotta just see what else I can do with my Volition stat. Volition is... purple, right? Yes. Well, this thing keeps changing. Wait, no, it was always those two stats, wasn't it? Oops. Come on. Ba boom. Gotta double check all my stats to make sure none of them have like minus volition. That would suck. And I have a point to spend, so why not? Wait, it's a white check, right? So I should try first, then level it up. Yeah. I was just thinking. What a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Look her in the eye. Soft, light brown eyes look back at you, directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. What? You know these guys? Who, me? Yes. He's talking about you, you shifty asshole. What? What is happening right now? You too. Me? No way. I'm straight, man. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. Composure and reaction speed are both being compromised by her wily ways. <laughs> Oh my god. Believe it. Which ones exactly are affected? There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume all of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. That guy's the most compromised one in here. No fucking way, man. I just want to drag that sweet methanol Ziggy. Really? Quick. Tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Lori. Truth, softness, protect her. She wants you. How did this happen? How it always does, through subtlety. What can I do? There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. Can't you turn them normal again? No. What use is this then? It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? Does that mean she's been lying to me? Yes. Mr. Thespian here has been singing pines to how truthful she is. She isn't a lady. She is the lady most fair and just. In his defense, to reduce him to such an inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths more, more than outright lies. That is correct. And omissions too. Can I trust that guy? A little. They're all still of limited use, interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something? I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. When it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, they are not to be trusted. Not with her. Can I trust any of them ever again? Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them, just not with her. A light green speck, an imperfection, on the outer rim of her right iris. It sparkles. God damn it. <laughs> Alright. So my character's infatuated with her. And so all of her, all of his faculties, like, tw 23 out of 24 personalities, maybe even all of them, are all compromised and are giving me false information so I don't actually know what she's saying, that it's true or not. Great. Great. As shown by the fact that Perception here is obsessed with the fact that... Wow, her eyes... <laughs> what is her plan? 
You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one who usually does says... She may want to control the information rollout, not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping, unrelated to this case. You doubt it's something truly insidious. See? It's oddly moderate, probably compromised. Ah. Uh, every single one, even logic. Everyone comes out with a narrative where even when we have to acknowledge the idea that she's lying, they're all like being charitable in the interpretation of why she's lying. Uh, her plan's probably not insidious, she just doesn't want to be a, a suspect or something. So which element of this is she lying about? Fuck, this is a mess. Alright. Is she the villain of the entire game? <laughs> The final boss fight that defeats all of my personalities. I've been talking to myself long enough. Let's get back to it. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. Miss, are you manipulating me? The silence broken. She exhales a little cloud of smoke and says, God, no. Mm-hmm. No, nope, those are all the same options as before. You've got quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it, she says without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Revacol. But you should still reprimand her. Sorry, brief interruption. Boop boop. Technically, possession of, Rev of narcotics is legal in Revachal, but you should still reprimand her. It's quite impressive. Had you amassed such a horde? With money, sir. She takes a drag. It's not exactly the anti star sized caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. The Anti-Star is, or was, a vespertine rock and roll star who liked to do drugs. He did so many drugs, he eventually mutated into a corpse. Aha! Collection includes NACRA, an opioid antagonist. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? His tone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry. She takes a, a drag and smiles. You seem to have, among other things, preptide. Oh yes, one of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours. She thinks. Not being happy... Cures those ailments. It's just a mirrored speed molecule, basically. That's all as far as that goes, then. Very funky. She takes a drag, looking you straight in the eye. Hmm. Let's return to this later, miss. Alright. Let's go ahead and leave the room. He wanted to talk to me, but he said he wanted to do it downstairs, which makes sense. Wait, that- wait. That stairs icon didn't- Oh, the stairs must fold halfway through and go the other way? Yeah, they do, because it's just this direction. I was like, what is going on with those- <laughs> what is happening there? Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just stripped off one layer of whatever it is. A decision to not cooperate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Why did she tell us all that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I have reason to doubt my ability to see through her lies. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. 
She seems... I know she's manipulative. So you said to her, what did you mean by it? She has half my skill set compromised, singing her tune. My assessments of her are untrustworthy. She seemed forthcoming to me. Unusually so. Being forthcoming with some things is a good way to obscure other things. But I wouldn't call myself compromised. Perhaps that's because you are. I am not easily swayed by young women, but on the other hand, the best liars are candid, and she was candid. The lieutenant seems oddly sure he is not compromised, yet psychologically at least, not psychologically at least, is it hubris? Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back soon enough. Maybe he's just gay. I'm curious about the gay situation in this game. Like, is it... is it underground? This seems to be pa based on an, el an element of Europe, but specifically not today, probably the past. Based on like the cars and some of the other technology and so on. Elements of it seem like they're from the past. And that's not great for LGBT, generally speaking. For LGBT issues, any the further back you get, the worse it gets usually. Although there's been there's been ups and downs. If you go all the way back to like pre the current cultures, there's some uh, there's some countries and nations that seem to have a pretty good stance on the whole thing. So I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, just a quick detour. Hopefully it shouldn't matter that much, because I think time doesn't pass when I'm not talking to people, which is good for me, because I don't want the weather to change. There was some part of the coastline that it just, my, my brain said, come here when it's snowing. And I'm like, alright. Shazam. So I'm gonna go just hug the coastline for a while while it's snowing. And see where it was, because I don't really know where it was, exactly. It's hard to remember those kinds of details sometimes. I don't think it was this dock. It should stay 1930. Looks like it was kind of busy down in that room and like the, the spinny lights were on, so... I think this might be all the time for me to do my karaoke too. Oh! Ha ha ha! What is it? Winter. Slow. To let go of Revachol. Flex some more wet snow from above you. Look around. The snow falls lazily, making the beach sand paler still, mixing with the rust-colored sewage runoff. And to think, it seems as though it were already spring. How does it feel? The melting snow seeps through your thin clothes. Grandmothers don't let their grandchildren out dressed so lightly in this weather. At least your hair is protected from getting wet and sticking together. You look around. What's the west? More winding coastline, lined with abandoned buildings, crumbling piers, salt water lapping at the dark piles, gray and red, forgotten city blocks. What remains of the pre-revolutionary effort to gentrify the coast? And beyond that? The waters turn black, coal city in the shadow of St. Martin. A boom town, back when coal extracted from countless shafts near the city was ended, uh, was needed to power Revicol. No more. The coal was supplanted by petroleum from the ocean floor and hydropower from, from the aspirants. Everything crumbled. These days, only the weakest remain in the coal city. Their hopes of getting richer linger in the defunct shafts under their feet. What is there? Below the old mines. La Osea Municipal, Revachol's underground cemetery, Les Petits Rats, Brave, the small rats, I guess? Brave the underground passageways, trying to get to Les Royaume, Les Petits Rats, children under 14. They go underground looking for artifacts to sell to foreign museums, and for fabled relics. Their parents let them, they go deeper, deeper. 
after rubies. Melicurite, la Lapis Lazuli, plundered from Safre and Sol during the time of the Caesarean. In the burial chambers of the kings, Grand Old Philippe, Guillaume II, and even the mausoleum of Philippe the Opulent. Two kilometers underground, in a winding shaft along those walls, mirrors have been placed so that daylight may eternally fall upon the richest of all the kings. The mausoleum contains untold quantities of gold, and that special, purest of pure magenta cocaine, favored by Revacholian royalty. Wipe the snow from your shoulder. You, petites, bats, return from the shafts, and even fewer find what they're looking for. A small child steps out of the black tunnel with silver trinkets in their pockets. All around her white snow on the extinguished coke furnaces, and on the weather-worn shacks where fathers beat their sons after drinking. The snow melts on your fingers, turning to water. This is a lot to take in, every single time. So it seems to be we were getting our second version of that time that we zoomed out in the f back by the, the tracks and the broken fence in the first place. Was this what I need to go for during the sleep? The snow? I think it is. The weather changed while I was doing this. The snow's gone. What's in the east? The canal you crossed to get here, and beyond it, Martinez proper. The district the police for- The district the police forgot to police. There's laughter. Lights. Attempts in entrepreneurial activity. Cynicism. Someone is scraping snow off their windshield at the roundabout, in the midst of what- it, which a statue of Philippa III serves as a destination for grade school field trips to find perch for winter birds. That's all? Like all monuments. It's also a warning. Six-story ruins on the south side of the roundabout cast a long shadow over the profligate king. And further. A fenced-off yard. There's a truck belonging to a logistics company parked next to the gate. Bright light from the building behind the fence reflects off its hood. Clean white light coming from the windows of a clean, cube-shaped office building hidden amidst ruins, a secret. Huh. A hidden office building to the far east. Are we just referring to the strike area? Where the leader is? What's in the north? The abandoned church. One of two remaining stave churches, which were collectively called Le Sept Soez. Another six the other six sisters were destroyed during the revolution. And further north? A serpentine strip of land, weaving its way into the Martinez Inlet. Unfortunates on the run. From the law, from themselves, sometimes hide out on nearby islets. Little dots in the ocean are occasionally submerged when the tide is high and the weather foul. And on the islets? The remains of a camp on a jagged piece of rock, a tent. Old dishes and cutlery, long since abandoned. A hermit crab scuttles among the debris, looking for a new shell. Further out, the lights burn bright on the resurrection. Way beyond Martinez, a popular spa destination for ample-bodied ozone kids with the equally ample op pockets. And on the other side of the inlet? Then there's ozone. But the snow falls too thick, you cannot see that far. Before that, before the curtains are drawn, the Bay of Revachol, vastness, great depth, over 1,200 meters at its deepest, water, air, brinier than here. It is crisscrossed by huge cargo ships bearing company logos, wild pines, Zam, Morian. And at the farthest reaches of the Bay of Revachol, the shadow of Coalition warship Archer, on perpetual patrol duty, ready to unleash artillery fire if you are to rise up against the market. You shudder. Ready to unleash artillery fire if you were to rise up against the market, the free market. If you if you want to if you want to resist capitalism, boom, we got guns for that. What's in the south? The race motorway, 881. The vehicles whooshing past one another, night day and night while those who reside beneath the motorway attempt to carry on with their lives in the snow and the slush in the south of the 881 is the pox. The pox. 
was once a park, a place for reflection and recuper recuperation for the patients at the old military hospital. In the 20s, it was used as a quarantine center during the measles outbreak that killed many children. Most everyone has avoided the hospital and surrounded park ever since. The box is completely wild now. Evergreen thickets covered in snow and industrial dust, feral dogs and even wolves roaming in packs. The police try to keep the deepest corners cordoned off, but still. Heavy drug users do slip through and hole up in the old military hospital hoping to find something to get high on among the hastily abandoned supplies, or just to overdose in peace. Further south. A line of motor garages with armored carapaces. Hunched in the cold. A mechanic is hard at work, patching up bullet holes in the side of a Capri 40. These are the garages of the Precinct 41. Snow settles on the roof of the pre- of the repurposed silk mill that serves as your station. Shivering RCM personnel huddle, hurry in and out of the main entrance. Around you, the snow continues to fall. To the west, the ocean swells. No, it, w it was home. I want more. The stairs descend. The central dram rock. A man named Kuklov has snow-covered stall there in the market across the bridge. He sells kebab infested with fly larvae to your colleagues who believe eating it will make them immune to food poisoning. Snow falls on the utility district, the library, the florist, the Saramizir, the Saramarizian rest, uh, restaurant that offers homemade wine, and also the brothels and drug dens and the chop shops and the zemliaki. All of this built around a lake that formed in a meteorite strike. That's awesome. <laughs> At the center of the lake, there's a little ship. There are lights in the bottom of its hull. There are lights di directed towards the sea floor, looking for something like whiskers. For what? A chill comes over you, crawling down your back. The sand under your feet is wet. Somewhere in the south, tarp uh, tarpaulin flap in the wind. What's above? More coalition aerostatics. Occasionally lights flash as they maneuver through the falling snow. One large airship carries crates in its belly. What's below me? Layer upon layer of sand poisoned with industrial runoff. The storm drainage, hidden bunkers, rats, scuttle. Tell me a secret of the sands, wind. Someone stuffed a big old polar anorak into a concrete pipe under the boardwalk. It would keep you warm. You will probably never happen across it, but who knows. A concrete pipe under the boardwalk. Stomp your feet for warmth, brushing off the snow. We should keep moving. Who knows when the snow will let up. Uh, it already did, funnily enough. Ha! Huh. Where's my other... There it is. Relax, it's not yours. You didn't crash every MC in Revacol. Hopefully. Oh yeah, there's another car here. So I think that was the thought. Under the boardwalk. A concrete pipe in the boardwalk. I'm not really sure where to find a concrete pipe necessarily. I think I'd ho I was hoping to find one of the bums. What the fuck? Where'd that just go? Okay. So I'm like right here or something. Where am I? Camera, calm down. <sighs> oh, that's the boardwalk. Concrete pipe at the boardwalk. Hmm. Camera keeps zooming into weird places around here. Okay. No, I. Yeah. Nah, I'm right. I get it, I get it. I was looking at familiar places and I'm like, I don't really know where any boardwalks are necessarily. But now that I've had some time to dwell on it, I'm like, okay. Alez Vushin. Vushin. Now that I've had a little chance to dwell on it, I'm like, okay, we, we got. It's the, the boardwalk is the, uh. 
the this this area right here. That's a boardwalk. That's a huge extended big ass zone. Whereas the places I was thinking of are just small docks or piers. So save that, put put a pin in that. That's a that's a note for our later times. I should go find the episode where I did my first big shivers marathon. So I'm curious what secret I might have heard about that time too that I didn't necessarily follow up on. Or maybe just it could be good to verify whether or not I found it yet, whatever it mentioned. Because it seems to give you a hint about a secret item in the area. You know, in case you weren't satisfied with all the, the story you got. Or lore, I guess. World building. A lot to take in at once, definitely. But this whole game's a lot to take in at once. So, there's that. 